You're watching Miami Temple Kids. and happy Sabbath. Today is the last Sabbath of the month. It's August 29, and it's time for another Sabbath School lesson review with our Miami Temple teachers. Remember, those who are in primary, juniors, and early teen class, you guys have a Zoom class at 1 p.m. So if you're interested in joining one of our Zoom lessons for primary, juniors, and early teens, you can email me at mtchildman at gmail.com. M Childman at gmail.com. But for right now, let's sit back and watch our Miami Temple teachers give their Sabbath school lesson reviews. We'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? Bye. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Cradle Roll Sabbath School. I'm so happy to see you, you, and you. Today's story comes from the Bible, and it's about a man by the name of Elijah. So everybody stand up because you're gonna help me tell the story. First, I want you to put your hands on your heads. This is the sign for a king. Elijah had a message for the king. The message was, there will be no more rain for three years until you pray to God. One, two, three years. Well, the king was so angry. How will he get food for the people if there's no rain? So Elijah had to run away from the king. Everybody run, run this way. And Elijah had to hide from the king. Everybody hide, peekaboo. And then Elijah had to run away to a brook with refreshing water and he drank the water everybody scooped the water like me but now what is elijah gonna eat where's his rice where's his potatoes where's his apple where's his pizza well not pizza and he heard birds flying let's fly like a bird and the birds brought him bread so Elijah ate the bread and it was so good, it made him fall asleep. Then he woke up and stretched. He went to drink water. Uh-oh, no more water. He looked for the birds, no more birds. Then God said, Elijah, go to a town and you will find a house and in the house is a woman and she has her son. Ask them for food. 
So everybody stand up, let's go walking. He knocked on the door. The woman opened the door and Elijah said, I need some food. What did Elijah say? Yes. And the woman said, well, I only have some flour. I only have some oil. I'm going to make bread and that's it. And Elijah said, my God will supply all your needs. And when she baked the bread, it was so delicious. And she went to make more bread. She had more oil. She had more flour because she trusted God. My God will supply all your needs. Everybody clap. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Well, boys and girls, that's it for our story. I'm gonna go back outside and enjoy the rain. From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I will be Jesus child wherever I go. Bye, boys and girls. Hi, kindergarten class. I'm here to, to say the memory verse for you guys here. And the memory verse is if either of them fall down, the other can help each other up. And where it's found is in Ecclesiastes 4 10. Bye, kindergarten class. Bye. Kindergartners, it's another Sabbath. This is week nine, but we're gonna do a story from week 10. Thank you, Jakey, for the memory verse. I'll go over that a little later at the end, okay? Now, remember last week we were talking about a man named what? Elisha, right, Elisha. Now, we pick up the story a little later in Elisha's life. Remember, he was going all around the country and different countries telling people about God. Now, Elisha was invited to dinner at a woman's house now. She came from Shunem. So we, the Bible calls her the Shunammite woman. So Elisha said, thank you so much for inviting me to dinner. It was a wonderful meal. I am so glad when, you, when I pass through your town and you invite me to dinner at your house because you are a wonderful cook and you are such a lovely lady. Thank you so much. And maybe I'll see you when I pass back again because Elisha was very glad when he had to pass through Shunem because he would get a good meal and he, would be, he wouldn't see his friends, the Shunemite woman and her husband. So the next time he passed through, well, before that, when he was going, the Shunemite woman said to her husband, ah, it is so nice to be able to share our blessings with Elisha, the man of God. I wish I could do more for him. So she thought about it and she said to her husband, why don't we build a special room just for Elisha up on the roof of our house? We can put a table in there and a bed and a chair and I can make it beautiful just for Elisha. So every time he passes through our town, he'll have a nice place to stay. And her husband thought it was a good idea. So he called his servants because they were very rich. He called his servants and they started building the room right away. So when they built the room, she furnished it beautifully with cushions and pillows and a bedspread. And it looked so beautiful. So the next time Elisha passed through, he saw the room because she took him upstairs. And he said, oh, that was so nice of you. This will be very comfortable. So he stayed there the night. Now, Elisha, wanted to do something for this lady. Now she fed him, she built him a room, she gave him a place to stay, she was so nice to him, she and her husband, and he wanted to do something for her. And he knew what to do. He sent his servant to go and ask her what she would like for him to do for her. She told his servant, I don't need anything. So when the servant went back to Elisha, he said, she said she doesn't need anything, but I know they don't have a child. So Elisha said, okay. So he called the woman and he said to her, next year this time, you and your husband will have a baby boy. Now, how did Elisha know that? God told him. Okay, so the next year, sure enough, she had a baby boy. And year after year, this boy grew and grew and she loved, she and her husband loved this boy and they took care of him. And one day, 
this boy went out to the field because his dad was working in the field. So he walked out to the field and it was a hot day. And all of a sudden he started crying, my head hurts, my head hurts. Oh. So the dad heard him and the dad said, oh, and he called his son to him. But the son was crying because his head was hurting so bad. Oh, you ever had a really bad headache? I hope you have never had it. But this boy's head was hurting. So the dad said to the servant, please, quick, my son is sick. Please take him to his mother. So the servant carried the boy to the mother and the mother held him in her lap and she tried putting cold rags on his forehead. She rocked him in her lap, but he just kept getting worse and worse and she couldn't do anything to help. And he died. Oh, she cried and cried and cried. <laughs> she was so sad. She cried. I, her husband, I'm sure, cried too. So what she did, she took her son and she took him upstairs. She carried him upstairs. Or maybe her husband did, because I think he might have been too heavy. Carried him upstairs and laid him on Elisha's bed. And she said to her husband, I need a servant to go with me to find Elisha. So of course, the servant went with her and they went walking and they found Elisha. And she said, Elisha, I need you to come back to my house with me. I need you to help my son. So Elisha came back with her. And when he came back, he walked up the stairs and he went up to the room that she had prepared for him. And he saw the boy lying on the bed so still. Because when you've died, you don't move. You don't breathe, nothing. You don't dream, nothing. It's like asleep, I guess. And he asked the widow to leave and he closed the door. And he knelt down by the, boy, by the bed, his bed that the boy was on, and he prayed to God. And he prayed and he prayed that God would bring this boy back to life. Now, what do you think happened? Of course, God brought him back to life. But as Elisha was praying, the boy started to sneeze. Now, dead people don't sneeze. Now, he sneezed seven times. Okay, so we're going to sneeze. All right, ready? And we're going to count. Now, if your parents ask you, what's wrong? Why are you sneezing? Just tell them you're helping me with a story. Okay, so let's start sneezing. Ready? Achoo! 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 And then he opened his eyes and he saw Elisha. And Elisha opened the door and he ran to get the little boy's mom. And when the mom came and saw that her son was alive, she hugged him, she cried, she laughed, she kissed him, she hugged him some more, she laughed some more, she cried some more, she was so happy. Ah, uh, now she had tried to do so much for Elisha, but Elisha had done so much more for her. Because of Elisha, the man of God, her son was now alive again. Now, that's amazing. It doesn't always happen, because sometimes when you die, you don't come back to life. But this time it did, because of how good this woman was. Now, she had money, but she didn't always use it for herself. She used it to help other people in her neighborhood also. So, it was a great miracle that God performed for her. So now I have five questions to see if you were listening. All right. Question number one, who built a room for Elisha? Yes, that woman. It's hard to say, right? Shunammite, Shunammite, Shunammite woman. Okay. Question number two, what did Elisha say they would have? A baby boy, right? Question number three, what happened to the child? Mm -hmm. He got sick and he died. Question number four, to whom did the mother go? Yep, she went to get Elisha. Last question, what did God use Elisha to do? Yep, to bring the boy back to life. Now, that was an amazing miracle. Now, God wants us to help each other. That's why our memory verse says, if one falls, the other can help that one up. If either one of them falls, the other can help him up. And that's found in your Bible in, it's a big word, Ecclesiastes. Can you say that? Ecclesiastes, that's a big word. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 10. That's where your memory verse comes from. And it says, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. So always remember to help those around you when they need help. Okay, until next time, bye. Hi, Father, class. Today's memory verse is Acts 13, verse 2. The Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called.
taught them. Happy Sabbath, kids. Today we will learn that God's grace is open to all. Last week, we learned that Paul and Barnabas spent a year in Antioch sharing God's grace. Let's watch our Graceling video to see where Paul and Barnabas were sent next. Have you ever been on a long trip? How did you travel? Paul and Barnabas were sent on a special trip, a trip to tell others of God's grace. But not everyone was happy as they preached. Paul and Barnabas had worked together in Antioch for a year. They kept busy teaching, preaching, and helping people, and the church in Antioch grew and grew. One day, some of the members were fasting and praying. They were asking God to guide them, to tell them what He wanted them to do. While they were praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. He said, I have called Paul and Barnabas to do a special work for me. Place your hands on them. Then pray for them and send them off to tell the good news in other places. Everyone was sad when they heard that Paul and Barnabas were going away, but they also wanted others to hear about Jesus. So the Antioch believers fasted and prayed. Then they gathered for a special prayer meeting. The elders in the church laid hands on Paul and Barnabas and prayed for them. Then they sent them on their way. Paul and Barnabas took a young man, John Mark, with them. He would learn from them and help them in their work. The three of them caught a boat at the port of Salamis and sailed to Cyprus. They traveled across the island, stopping at all the Jewish synagogues and teaching everyone who would listen. Soon they moved on to Paphos, on the other side of the island. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet called Bar-Jesus, or Illumis. He was an important man and one of the Roman proconsuls or the governor's attendants. Cyprus was not a huge island, so the news of strangers traveled fast. The proconsul soon heard about Paul and his companions. He was curious to hear the word of God. Alumus was not happy about that at all. He was afraid that he would lose his influence with the proconsul. So he tried to turn the proconsul against Paul and his friends. But the Holy Spirit showed Paul what was happening. Suddenly Paul turned and looked directly at Alumus. You are a child of the devil, he said. You are an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of tricks and ways to fool people. You will never stop trying to put roadblocks in the way of the Lord. Because of your actions, you will be blind for a while. You will not be able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, Illumis felt a dark mist rolling in front of his eyes. He blinked. He rubbed his eyes. He tried to push it away. Everything got darker and darker. Illumis was blind. He could not see a thing. He began to reach out a hand for someone to guide him so he did not fall. The proconsul was amazed. One moment Illumis could see, the next moment he was blind. This convinced the proconsul that Paul was teaching the truth. He listened and learned, and he soon believed in God. Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark traveled on to many other places. Everywhere they went, they told everyone the good news. God's grace is free and available to everyone. We can be like Paul and his friends. We too can tell people we meet about God's wonderful love and grace. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you today at Zoom meeting at 1 p.m. Bye.
Hi, I'm Michaela, and the Junior's PowerPoint is taken from 1 Corinthians 14.40. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath, Junior family! We are on Lesson 9, and this week we're going to continue with Moses. The story this week is about getting organized, and the title of this week's lesson is Let's Get Organized. So the story of this week was about how Moses had become the leader of the nation of Israel. Now in Israel there were approximately, and it's estimated to have been between two to three million people that were walking in the desert with Moses at that time. So Moses is kind of like us, we're people, right? And as people, we can be pretty fragile, just like this piece of paper towel. I'm gonna put it here on this tube. And what was happening to Moses was that even though they were in the desert and they were walking, um, there were problems that were happening and people were coming to Moses consistently on a daily basis to solve their problems. So look, I'm gonna show you what happens when the problem started coming to Moses. This is what happened, watch the tube. So what happened was that Moses was taken out of, kind of like moved out of his position, right? But Jethro, his father-in-law came to visit him and he saw what he was doing and he said, wait a minute, you can't act like this. You can't be doing this on a daily basis. Not only are you gonna wear yourself out, you're not gonna be able to lead the people of Israel well. So Jethro said to Moses, he said, you know, find yourself a couple of very wise men, right, to surround you. And these wise men are going to be the judges that will hear all the complaints and all the problems and all the negative things that are happening in the camp and they're going to make judgments on your behalf. So here's Moses again. He's still in this position of leadership, but now we're going to add the men who are supposed to be the judges. And those men are represented by the salt. We're going to put some salt in this tube. Now in our church, we have leaders like pastors, but they are also supported by other members of leadership which are the elders and you know what if we look at our church as a whole we have different organizations we have conferences we have unions we have divisions so Jethro was kind of bringing organization to the camp of Israel so let's see now Moses found all these wise men who brought judgment and fairness to Israel. Let's see what happens when the problems start coming up to Moses. You see what's happening? It's not tearing through the paper. It's not transforming the paper. It's keeping the paper whole. And Moses was kept whole all throughout those years in the desert because he had an organization and people who were supporting him at all times. But if he didn't have those men, he would have worn himself out and Jethro saw that. So our lesson for today is not only about leadership, but about supporting those who are in leading positions in our church. Have a happy Sabbath and I'll see you at our Zoom class. Hey kids, have you ever wondered how hard it is to be a leader, like the president, or a king? They have to be in charge of a whole country, and all of its people! I bet it's really stressful and really hard. Well, in today's lesson, we're going to hear about Moses again, and hopefully learn a little something about leadership. Moses was going to wear himself out, leading the Israelites alone. Moses and the Israelites have been through a lot of tough things. 
They escaped slavery in Egypt, walked through the Red Sea, and spent a lot of time wandering through the wilderness. And through all of that, the Israelites were pretty tired and pretty grumpy and had lots of arguments. As a leader, Moses would sit every day, sunrise to sunset, and listen to the people's arguments and told them how to solve them. He was doing way too much work for one person. Have you ever done that? Have you ever worked so hard you got really tired? And maybe you didn't do a very good job. Well, that's the direction Moses was headed. Jethro gave Moses some really practical advice about leadership. One day, his father-in-law, that means his wife's dad, Jethro came to visit. While Jethro was visiting, he saw all the things that Moses had to do as a leader, and he gave him some good advice. He told Moses if he was gonna keep doing this all on his own, he was gonna get really worn out. He told him to pick some people that he really trusted and use them to help him lead the Israelites. Those people could handle all of the small stuff, and Moses can handle all the big, important stuff. That way, Moses wouldn't get worn out and he could keep doing the good job. So kids, what can we learn from this? God loves it when everybody pitches in and helps out. Kids, if you wanna be a good leader, you have to know you can't do it on your own. Good leaders know that they need a good team to help them out. Memory verse. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. I mean, think of Jesus. He was the best leader ever, but he still had his 12 disciples to help him. So kids, next time you think about how hard it is to be a president or a king, remember that good leaders have a team helping them out. And remember, even the best leaders can't do everything on their own. Hello, my early teens. How are you? Well, I hope. Well, this week's lesson focuses on gossip and its negative effects. I'm sure you've heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we all know that that's simply not true. Let's talk about this in greater detail this afternoon during our one o'clock Zoom meeting. But in the meantime, here's a short video on the subject. See you soon. Psst. Hey, check this out. Huh? Gossip. It may seem like nothing more than harmless talk. Or is it? If you've ever found out somebody was talking about you behind your back, then you know. Gossip can hurt. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 18, that words can stab like a sword. <gasps> so how can you make sure that you aren't the one doing the stabbing? Are you supposed to stop talking completely? At Philippians 2.4, the Bible says we're supposed to be interested in the lives of others. So it's normal to talk about other people. But that talk can quickly turn ugly and damage a person's good reputation. So what can you do before this happens? For example, when comments about others get sarcastic or negative, that's a sign the conversation's going in the wrong direction. Don't get dragged in. Change the subject. You have to take action and fast. Take responsibility. You see, even if you're not the source of a rumor, repeating it can make you guilty of spreading falsehood. Instead, save yourself a lot of pain by following the Bible's wise counsel in 1 Thessalonians 4.11. Mind your own business. Before you start talking about others, ask yourself, do I really know all the facts? If what I say gets repeated, is the other person's reputation going to be damaged? And what about my own reputation? Remember, whenever harmful gossip creeps into your conversation, Take action. The people around you will feel happy, and so will you. And that was our Sabbath School lesson review for this week. 
Now, guys, remember to tell your parents that between now and the 11 a.m. service, they need to review the lesson with you guys, all right? Remember, they can go to miamitemple.org where you will find lots of different ideas on ways to review the lessons with your kids. I also want to make a special announcement. Our adventures and pathfinders for Miami Temple are starting up. So if you want to join our adventures or pathfinders club, you can find the forms also on our website at miamitemple.org. You can download them and send them in to the office or you can email them to mtchildman at gmail.com. All right, so we'll see you guys next week. Happy Sabbath. Bye.